All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Tuesday, February 14th, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis, or just to leave me a Valentine's Day card. Love you all. Anyways, let's get into the market here. Um, so Spider's basically flat today, but um, that does not tell the story, right? So let's take a look here. Um, let's go over to the futures. Obviously, CPI print coming out today. It didn't really, it was hot, but it was basically on the high end of the expected scale. So 6.4 versus basically 6.3, 6.2 expected. Um, so just hotter than expected here. Um, maybe the revisions accounted for a lot of that. Who knows? Um, either way, um, you can see here we sold off initially, then we bid up all the way up to 41.86, and then we sold off sharply by the open. And we'll flip back over to the spiders here. You can see that's where we opened. We get um, we gapped down. We flushed pretty good right into this green bar here. Pierced the 200 moving average on the 10 minute. And then for we from what I can see, um, you got like a lot of FOMO zero DTE buyers buying puts right into this opening bar, and they bought that dip. And take a look at the triple Qs here. Look at that tail candle. Uh, a lot of stocks like Nvidia had a huge surge. We played. Um, played this for a day trade this morning off the relative strength. Tesla showing a lot of relative strength right now. But in any case, you can see we um, we bid up here. And then what happened? We went up into this trend line on the hourly. And we pierced it a little bit. FOMO call buyer. So, um, and then we sold off really sharply. A um, little bear flag right back down. And then a rally back up. And we're just kind of floating higher right now. So markets have largely recovered here. but And they're basically flat. Um, and they look constructive for a possible move tomorrow. Um, now, what's going on here? Um, first of all, social media, like my Twitter is just like blowing up today. Um, bulls, bears, um, this, that, the other thing. I'm going to tell you right now, guys, this is today's price action. This is just premium collection. Okay, this is, it's OPEX week. Um, we have 80 point swings in the futures in literally 45 minutes um like it's nothing here and this one here was in like 30 minutes this is this is premium collection they got you fomoed on the short side down here they got the fomo call buyers they got the fomo put buyers again um and then they floated back up so again this a lot of this is premium collections whipsaw opex week monthly opex vol crush we talked about this as a possibility i said look vix you know i said this the other day the VIX often gets bid up ahead of CPI. You could see it come back down uh, regardless of the number. It's certainly possible here because it was bid up ahead of CPI. So now it's coming in a little bit. Um, the real move, I think, will be tomorrow into Thursday, more so Thursday specifically. And we are now into what I would call a period of risk here. Um, so the VIX specifically, um, VIX expiration is tomorrow. And there is a ton of hedges expiring tomorrow, meaning there is not a lot of demand for volatility right now because everybody has protection. That changes uh, at the end of the day tomorrow. So Thursday, um, I mean, we could, you know, we could see something tomorrow, but Thursday for the spiders here is really kind of where I'm seeing the risk start to pop up, not just cyclically, but um, as far as the volatility is concerned as well. So we have to be careful about expiration here. And if you look back to last month, um, let me see if we can see it on the futures. Yeah, so there you go. So there's the VIX, VIX futures last year, not last month, sorry. But if you go back and look at every time we had a expiration on the futures, um, I think like nine out of the last 12 months, something like that, um, there was a 100 point move in the spiders. So or I should say in the futures, a 10 point move in the spiders on Thursday. I think if we're up big tomorrow and we get really complacent, you could see a very, very um, dangerous pocket of risk. I, I could, I will basically say that. Um, right now, the bears are like literally throwing their hands up because um, we got a hot CPI and the market just doesn't really care. Um, does the market actually not care, or is this just opex related, and it, or is it just they need to capitulate the bears? I think it's the latter two. The market actually cares, and it, and it will care. Um, why do I know that? Two year. What do I hammer on every single day? This is a major problem. Look at the volume there, by the way. 
So we're almost at, if you want to visualize it from the yield, or you know, you can't really see it there. So the futures are a little bit different here, but breakout here on the yield. Um, the futures ZT, I mean, we're getting close to double bottom here. There should be a little bit of support in this area with the 7.5 retrace. So we were into that right now, but this is, I mean, and this is why bears are frustrated, but you know, this type of thing, it can last for a little bit of time. It doesn't always just, um, you know, just like the, the yield curve being inverted. It doesn't just, oh, it's inverted. Now we crash. Like it doesn't work that way. Um, so you can kind of have a leading indicator here and, or I should say the markets can lag it for a little bit of time. And that's what needs to happen. You can't have too many bears on board. You know, when every little micro sell, um, you see a bunch of put buyers jump in, it's probably not ready to top out yet, but I think we're getting kind of close there. I'm seeing a lot of bears flip bullish again. Um, so, you know, every day I think we get a little bit closer here, but uh, bottom line, we are into a pocket of risk here um, for volatility, if you ask me. Um, let's take a look at ZB as well while we're at it. So that is holding up okay. Um, still down 25 basis points, but you wanted to see a nice bounce off of this 100 MA and you couldn't hold the gains here. So on an intraday basis, this has faded a lot of that. Yes, it's kind of coming back a little bit. It's off the lows, um, but you, not a great looking candle there. Um, all, all things considered, this could easily turn into an inside bar. Um, so we'll be careful with bonds here. I don't think the inflation trades over um, personally. Um, another thing too. So we have this bullish pattern here on the spiders, you know, on the Qs, of course. Dollar index, that's test candle number two. So we had one last week, test candle inside, another test candle inside. We've got a doji there on the daily. So dollar is saying um, it wants to go higher here. And the markets are also showing a bull flag here as well. Um, and that is with the ZT, the two year breaking down. So, I mean, I'm going to go with the bond market and the dollar every time, um, as you guys know. But again, we can hold up. I can't rule out. I can't even rule out a push up to 422. Maybe that's how you get the the last of the bears out. But um, you know, these these things can't last forever. And it's a spectacular rally, spectacular bear market rally. But you know, I think we're on borrowed time here, and we're getting pretty close. I can't rule out. I mean, we even have um, if we look on the ES, there's still an order up at 4200. It's not that big here. We almost got there this morning. We'll be interesting to see what the book map looks like tomorrow. Look like we're into a little bit of resistance here right now, but um, you know, 4,200 is not that, not, not that really that far away on the ES. Um, so either way, um, you guys know my stance here. Um, lots of whipsaw, be careful trading this as a day trader. You love this um, as a swing trader. It's just tough because you got to sit on your hands. And um, you know, this is really around, right around the time where the market is getting ready to turn, but it's that last kind of little bit there that can get you hurt if you if you're too early to the party um but either way um market's holding up right now we'll see what they do tomorrow just be on the watch i would say around thursday and um, really into next week as well all right anyways um triple q's which we mentioned tesla having a nice day let's take a look at apple apple still under a little bit of pressure here down 29 basis points never really went yeah, it still hasn't even gone green at all today um, Microsoft was also kind of flattish as well, um, gapped up unlike everything else, but then it's just kind of just gone sideways for most of the day. So Apple, Microsoft, a little bit of laggards here. NVIDIA, uh, Tesla doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. Um, Amazon was a lot stronger early, earlier. That came off the highs. Google was weak earlier. That did come back in a little bit. That filled the gap there and is into some support right now. So Google um, might be do for a little bit of a bounce here. That's had a pretty good fall off the highs there. Meta, um, again, was strong this morning, but then has been kind of flat ever since then. And Netflix, same kind of thing, um, was really strong this morning, but then has, hasn't really done much since then. So um, Big Tech hanging in there, okay. The SMH is pushing higher here. I've already got max move done on this one. So that's around 263 if we were to get up there. I'm not even sure we do. I think right now it's more about time than price here. Um, and I don't, I don't know what the catalyst is um for that to even happen in the next couple of days let me check i'm going to check out nvidia's earnings here so february 22nd so that's not even until next wednesday so it's tough to say the pattern's good here on the uh daily but 263 is the max move i've got done on that um igv here this one can still make a nominal high as well there's still that gap up there as um 
what did we say, 30307. So again, that would coincide most likely with that 422 gap there on the spider. So um, pretty easy one to look at there. Uh, before we forget the Russell here, um, a little bit on the weaker side, only up just 20 basis points versus uh, the triple Q's up about 90. And Spider's up 10, 10 to 12 there and the Dow the weakest. Um, Russell 2000 finding a little bit of resistance though at that uh, previous rising wedge trend line. And you do have kind of a, you know, let me just get rid of these lines. You do have a little bit of a daily inside bar there. So um, we'll see it probably wants to go up and challenge 195.12, assuming the market can hold up. Um, but Russell definitely, Russell and the Dow so far have definitely been the weaker ones lately. Um, and specifically the Russell is starting to lose gas. You guys know my thoughts on that. I'm not expecting higher highs here for the Russell. If it is, it's going to be nominal and it'll be very minimal. So, I mean, you're looking at, I mean, you have a gap there at 201. It's possible. Um, I think the market would have to rally for the next week or so for that to even um, come into play. But um, yeah, anyways, Russell on the weaker side, Dow here again, targets the same 345, maybe a Pierce if it can get up there. Um, if not, well, then that's all she wrote. <laughs> anyways, um, transports. DJT was weaker earlier and had a nice little bounce off the lows. So yeah, up 1%. Take a look at the intraday volatility here on the transports. Big move down, up, faded the entire move, and now right back to the high. So transport's holding up okay. There will be resistance at 15.5, um, maybe a little bit higher though. Um, but again, transport's getting a bounce like everything else there. So we'll just continue to watch that. Um, we talked about rates already. Um, let's go over to home builders here. So XHB hanging in there. So you got an inside bar here on the daily. Um, we basically went back down and let's get rid of this trend line right now. So we pulled back to the 20 moving average effectively. And now just kind of an inside day there down 26 basis points. Again, a lot of whipsaw here. Um, let's not make too much out of it. ITB, same thing. I think these have both topped out though. Um, and the VNQ, same thing. Down 75 basis points in an up market. So real estate not looking too hot here. Although it's, you know, it's trying to hold that 20 and 200 moving average for right now. All right, XLF still getting a little bit money flow here. So it's it, this was a, a laggard sector and it still is. I mean, you're still struggling. It's look how hard it is for this to, and it's just kind of grinding up here and now putting in kind of lower highs. Um, but on an intraday basis, it's actually held up a little bit better. It had a nice dip buy in the morning and actually went positive before really the rest of the market did. But now look at it. So Here's the XLF went green before everything else, and now it's underperforming. And look at where we're flagging. We're flagging negative versus the spiders, which is flagging kind of positive here. So lots of whipsaw here in these banks. Uh, we'll see what we get tomorrow here, but banks have still been a lagging sector, as we've already noted. Um, broker dealers here are still holding up really well. Um, you know, not every sector in a bear market uh, goes straight down. Broker dealers are no exception there. Let's keep an eye on this pattern here as I'm just kind of noticing it. Um, you might have a little bit of a rising wedge there potentially. So we'll watch that. You could really even say it goes all the way down here. Yeah, there you go. So let's watch that moving forward. I mean, it's a big pattern too. Let's zoom out. Yeah. Interesting pattern there on XPD. We'll follow that one for the next couple of weeks here. Uh, but again, XPD holding up well, as we've already mentioned. Anyways, crude here, um, down 1.17%, basically just sideways. Um, again, crude's been very quiet lately, just been coiled up in this range here. Um, we'll see what it does. Um, it's actually starting to, you know, if this can flag a little bit more, this can potentially get a pop here, maybe to that 85 handle. Uh, but again, neutral to bearish bias until proven otherwise, until we get above that red bar high. So nothing has changed there. Um, XLE, again, dip by here. And this is holding up okay, up 26 basis points. If you can consolidate a little bit more, this one can get a bid. So XLE hanging in there, okay. XOP as well, that looks good to me right now. OIH almost making new year to date highs or 52 week highs, I should say. Um, and again, I do think this one wants 350. Over to Nat Gas. So we finally got something interesting to say here on Nat Gas. So it's having a nice day, outside move up, and you're almost having a weekly higher high here as well. So that's constructed. I've been telling my members here to watch this four hour 50 MA. And we finally confirmed above that now. So, and that's really going back to, I mean, you got to go really all the way back to December 16th to where we were actually like confirmed above that. Um, I mean, we, yeah, we pierced it a few times. We tried to get above it a few times, but now starting to dip back up here. Take a look at the Mac as well. 
Um, let's look on the daily. So starting to curl back up and work off that divergence. I like Nat gas down here. Risk reward is heavily skewed. And it looks like finally we're seeing um, whatever seller here was liquidating or being forced to sell. And they were doing it right around the same time every day too. So right around like 12 o'clock. Um, that they may have dried up here. So we'll see. First step is getting above this higher high. If you can do that, we get right up to three bucks and then 350 here. Um, so Nat gas finally showing some constructive um, technicals here. Lots of volume here, by the way, we noted that last week um, and a lot of volume coming in this week as well. All right, over to the dollar, which we already talked about. Second test candle. I like the dollar. I've got buy signals on the DXY. I've got sell signals on a lot of other currencies still, so nothing has changed there. Might take until OPEX for this to take off, but I like this consolidation pattern. Bullish in sidebar. That looks good to me so far. Gold, I think, is a little oversold here. Um, that one, I shouldn't say over, short term, very short term oversold. You are under the 50 moving average. You've got a doji with volume. So this can get a bid here. I think 1900 will probably be back tested. Maybe 1910, you got the 20 moving average up there, but um, that's about all the upside I see at the moment. This will get back to 1830. And then silver holding that 100 MA. This should also get a bid here as well, um, possibly up to 2275 to 23. So again, same, same thing as yesterday there. And then platinum. Little, little bit of a, a concern there. So down 2.3%. That's an engulfing reversal with volume. Um, we'll see what this does by the end of the week. This should be able to hold up here. This is a lot of support right now. Um, and it is a little oversold, but this is, um, you know, it's a pretty, pretty good sell job there today. You might even be able to make a case you got a, a falling wedge starting to build up here. Let's see, see if we can get this drawn in. I don't know if it's going to be even that good. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I guess you could make a case there. So we'll see. Maybe that was just a little shakeout or a flush out there. Um, we'll watch that tomorrow, but that was a pretty uh, pretty good reversal there. On PL Futures, copper is still putting in this inside bar here, but it's holding the 50 moving average. Um, so we'll see what that does. Going to tomorrow, nothing has really changed there. And then Bitcoin. Um, if I can get Bitcoin up here, one second. There we go. Um, so yeah, still kind of a daily inside bar. So again, we had a bull flag starting to form. It can turn into a rolling top like we talked about. And now a daily inside bar here on Bitcoin. We'll see what it does into that 20 moving average. Um, you also have that red bar high, that breakdown bar high. So yeah, it's hanging in there for now. But um, the longer this consolidates, the more minor this 21,000 area becomes. Um, and you can be vulnerable to the downside. Anyways, market's closing in about seven minutes here. Spiders are holding up into the end of the day. Maybe they pop it up here tomorrow. Look at this squeeze in Tesla. This is ridiculous. This moved about 8% in like 30 minutes here this morning. What a, what a pop there on Tesla and NVIDIA. Again, bottom line though, um, tomorrow, lots of premium after the end of the day. Lots of vol premium is rolling off the table, which in layman's terms, basically the market will be very unhedged. So um, whereas all these dips have been bought really since December, um, that may not be the case here as there could be a rush into volatility. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me on conovertrades.com. Talk to you all tomorrow.